Economic and financial crimes are twin evil that can destroy any society or nation if left unchecked. It is therefore our collective responsibility to ensure that we do not create an environment for this monster to thrive. Hello and welcome to The Ego, Nigeria's foremost anti-corruption program. It is a program that updates you on Nigeria's unrelenting war against graft. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Welcome to the program. On the program today, Federal Government of Nigeria, the National Assembly and the EFCC seek support for renewed anti-corruption campaign. Just as the EFCC is set to rearrange the Suiki others November 16 in the infamous Amsgate saga. Also on this edition, court warns ex faraba State Governor Julie Inyami against interfering with EFCC's witnesses just as lawyer to a former Plateau State Governor Joshua Dari receives warning for delayed tactics. This and more will come your way after this break. Join us again. Well, my name is Elijah Mohammed. I am the Minister of Information and Culture. Uh, my message to Nigerians is that we should treat corruption the same way we treat cancer. In other words, we should wage war against corruption. If we do not wage war against corruption, we will lose everything. We will not be able to develop, we will not be able to provide for the people, we will not be able to secure our country. We begin with a call by the federal government for more support from Nigerians for the efforts aimed at recovering stolen funds from persons that looted the nation's treasury. Kamali Gebi tells us more. The call was made by the Vice President, Yemi Oshimbajo, on Tuesday, October 18, 2016, while addressing participants at a two-day national conference jointly organized by the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. PACAC and the National Assembly. The program with the theme, The Role of the Legislature in the Fight Against Corruption in Nigeria, offers a platform for participants to brainstorm on how to tackle corruption in the country. Declaring the conference open, Oshimbajo lamented the state of corruption in Nigeria, adding that Nigeria stands the risk of perpetually remaining underdeveloped if nothing is done to stem the tide of corruption. I've been involved in anti corruption advocacy research and action since 1990. In all of that almost 26 years, I have never heard anyone say with any seriousness that they support corruption. Indeed, everyone agrees that corruption is ultimately a fatal scourge. Many even argue that it is a crime against humanity, given the fact that in many countries, including ours, it is largely responsible for the abject poverty of the majority and the massive fatalities of the most vulnerable in our society. But the majority of our citizens agreed and mindless selfishness that attends corruption is bewildering. How do you explain how anyone can embezzle funds meant to equip soldiers for a war that could consume thousands and eventually even all of us? Or how in the midst of so much want can some seize the treasury for themselves, their family and their friends? And how can anyone argue after all of that, that all that is required and all that we need pay attention to is the technicality of how such people are possibly arrested? 
He appealed to Nigerians to team up with the federal government in its effort to rid the nation of corruption. Also speaking, the Senate President Bukola Saraki said the anti-corruption fight embarked upon by the Buhari-led government should not be a mantra or a tool for political witch hunt, but should be a collective responsibility of everybody to rid Nigeria of impunity and hardship. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight against corruption cannot, I will not also be won on the basis of just prosecution of offenders. My view that it is one area that needs a lot of work, and that is the area of prevention. And I will start by looking at us to look at our processes, the way our financial institutions operate, the way our financial institutions know their clients, the way we operate in areas of land registry, all the areas where proceeds for corruption can be hidden. It is my view that stringent procedures that are ready to apply tough fines to defaulting parties play a great role to prevent corruption. We must appreciate that any society that creates a very easy process to hide away ill gotten proceeds will have systemic prevalent corruption. In his keynote address, a former director of the Kenya Anti Corruption Commission, Patrick Lumumba, recommended severe sanctions to deter corrupt persons. We must also The chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Professor Itzesage, berated the legislature for its failure to fight corruption, just as the chairman of the Senate Committee on Anti-Corruption and Financial Crimes, Chuku Kautazi, enjoined the stakeholders to aggregate towards institutionalizing preventive mechanisms. He added that, however, we recognize that prevention is not substitute for sanctions. Every society must deter derelictions. That is why the current focus on investigation, indictment, prosecution and conviction should continue in view of the realities of the Nigerian nation. Legislature's critical function would produce an attitude of responsibility and restraint in the executive, which would oblige the latter to reckon with the possible reaction of the legislature in framing and taking its decisions. Ibrahim Mogu, acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, who spoke through David Tukura, deputy director, directorate of planning, policy and statistics, emphasized the need to review certain laws in line with international best practices. The EFCC boss also advocated for a percentage of assets recovered by the EFCC to be given to the commission, saying, One of the things that concern us in the EFCC is uh, the issue of... Um, uh, the non-provision of a civil recovery uh, process of crime, that's non-conviction-based recovery. It is of great grave concern to us. The way it now is we have to prove in court that this is a pro process of crime. In other jurisdictions, the accused has to prove that the property that he has actually represents the fruit of his labor, that he did not put his hand in the public till to enrich himself. So, right, so the onus of proof is so heavy upon us. According to him, in some jurisdictions like the UK, proceeds of crime are further used to strengthen the agency. In EFCC, we have been struggling for years to build our headquarters. And when I think of the billions of Naira we recover, I can see what would have happened if we are allowed to apply a percentage of this recovery into our operations. End of quote. The two-day conference, among other subjects, examined the role of the legislature as a champion of anti-corruption reforms reform of the anti-corruption legal framework and compliance with international standards.
Corruption is dishonesty and illegal behavior by people in positions of trust. A public office is a public trust. Do not abuse positions of trust for private gains. Stay away from corruption. Nigeria is a great nation and it is our responsibility to make the country greater. If you notice any act of corruption, please report to the EFCC via info at EFCCNigeria.org or call 09-904-4751 or 904 4752 You can also call 09-904-4753. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Now to court matters. Justice Usain Baba Yusuf of the FCT High Court sitting in Maitama, Abuja, on Friday, October 21, 2016, granted the application brought by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, seeking the consolidation of the two separate criminal charges against former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambadasuki retired, and others with respect to their involvement in the 2.1 billion Naira arms scam. Again, Kamali Gebi completes the story. Dasuki, first defendant, alongside Shuaibu Salisu, a former director of finance and administration, office of the National Security Advisor, Aminu Baba Usa, the former general manager of Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, Acacia Holdings Limited, and Reliance Referral Hospital Limited, are being prosecuted by the EFCC on a 19-count charge bordering on money laundering and criminal breach of trust to the tune of 13 billion 570 million naira. Similarly, Dasuki is being prosecuted by the anti graft agency alongside Bashir Yuguda, a former Minister of State for Finance, Atahiru Bafarawa, former Governor of Sokoto State, his son Sagir, and their firm Dalhatu Investment for 13 billion naira fraud before Justice Afem. At the last hearing on Wednesday, October 5, 2016, counsel to the EFCC Rotimi Jacobs SAN moved an application for the consolidation of the two cases to allow for diligent prosecution. Jacobs and Dasuki's counsel, Joseph Daudu, SAN, then agreed before Justice Baba Yusuf to formally write the chief judge of the FCT judiciary, Justice Ishak Bello, to consolidate the two charges in the interest of justice. The two counsels also urged Justice Baba Yusuf to adjourn the matter pending the time the chief judge would consider the application for consolidation. Consequently, the matter was adjourned to October 21st, 2016 to allow the two parties reach a consensus and present the outcome of their meeting with the Chief Judge of the FCT High Court, Abuja. At the resumed sitting, counsel to EFCC, O.A. Atolagbe, told Justice Baba Yusuf that, and I quote, We met with Justice Afem a few minutes ago and he has ruled that the sister charge, CR-42-15, be transferred to this honorable court. We urge your lordship to adjourn the two cases to the same day for trial or for further directions. End of quote. The defense counsels raised no objection to the prosecution's pleadings. Consequently, Justice Baba Yusuf granted the application and ruled that the two cases be consolidated, adding that the implication of this transfer is that the prosecution will serve the defense counsels so that the defendants can be rearranged before his court. He therefore adjourned to November 16th, 2016 for rearrangement of the accused persons. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Justice Adebu Kola Banjoko of the FCT High Court sitting in Gudu, Abuja, on Wednesday, October 19, 2016, warned parties, their agents, and surrogates in a suit before it to stop interfering with prosecution witnesses. Sylvia Mbamalu tells us about this and others. The judge gave the warning at the resumed trial of a former Taraba state governor, 
Jolly Inyame. Following complaints from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC's prosecution team, that the defendant was interfering with its witnesses. Nyame is standing trial on a 41-count charge of money laundering, criminal breach of trust and gratification to the tune of 1.64 billion naira. The case, which had earlier been slated for hearing, could not go on as counsel to the EFCC, Henry Ejiga, told the court that the prosecution had the challenge in presenting its witnesses due to interference from the defendant. We encountered constraints in bringing our witness to court because the defendant had been interfering with our witnesses, Ejiga lamented. He added that we are bringing this information to the notice of the court in case we decide to take any action as we intend to conduct an investigation. Justice Banjoko, who frowned on the act, also said that one of her staff had been receiving messages on her mobile phone. All this interference should stop. Nothing but the truth will carry the day, Justice Banjoko warned. Thereafter, the case was adjourned to November 1, 2016, for trial. In a related development, the trial of a former governor of Plateau State, Joshua Darie, before Justice Adebukola Banjoko of the FCT High Court, sitting in Gudu, Abuja, was stalled on Thursday, October 20, 2016, as Darie's counsel, Nantok Joshua, asked for an adjournment to enable the defense produce a ruling purportedly delivered by a Kaduna State High Court, which it intended to tender and build on with its next witnesses. The ruling, according to Joshua, deals with the ecological funds, which is the crux of the case, couldn't be tendered because the registrar of the Kaduna State High Court was unavailable to provide it with a copy. Justice Banjoko expressed dismay with action of the defense, insisting that the public must be told the truth of what is going on before her court in a trial that has dragged on for close to a decade. Apparently uncomfortable with the way the defense is handling its case, the judge further said that, even if I'm not in court, I should be asked why. She admonished counsels to be accountable for their actions, saying, Judges, more often than not, are being blamed for the incessant delays in cases. Aside that, Justice Banjoko noted that the purported ruling waiting to be collected from a court of coordinate jurisdiction was only persuasive and not binding on her court. Counsel to EFCC, Rotimi Jacobs, SAN, had earlier kicked against the defense request for a further adjournment, insisting that the case slated for hearing must go on. The case had been adjourned for continuation of hearing. Darie is being prosecuted by the EFCC for allegedly siphoning Plateau State's ecological funds to the tune of 1.16 billion naira. Sylvia Mbamalu, reporting for The Eagle. Corruption is dishonesty and illegal behavior by people in positions of trust. A public office is a public trust. Do not abuse positions of trust for private gains. Stay away from corruption. Nigeria is a great nation and it is our responsibility to make the country greater. If you notice any act of corruption, please report to the EFCC via info at efccnigeria.org or call 09-904-4751 or 904 4752 You can also call 09-904-4753. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Welcome back. Next is our feedback segment. Please stay tuned. We begin with Sonny Godwin's message which says, I had wanted to report some fraudsters presenting themselves as staffs of British Airways defrauding people, but I don't know how to go about it. Sonny, 
What you do is to write a petition addressed to the EFCC chairman, attaching supporting documents and drop it at any EFCC office nearest to you or send it to info at EFCCNigeria.org. Next is Mustafa Bello's message saying, EFCC, it is a wonderful job you're doing. Keep on pressing buttons. Don't relent. You will achieve more success as God Almighty has been with you, is still with you, and he will be with you. God Almighty is always with the righteous. EFCC, carry go. Thank you, Mustafa, for these words of encouragement and prayers. Please join in the fight against corruption. See something, say something, and don't hesitate to do something about it. We equally received a message from Zakaria Ali saying, I must confess that EFCC is doing well in the fight against corruption. However, they should reduce media trial of suspects because it affects the integrity of the agency. Thank you, Zakaria, for your advice. But we would like to clarify that all the commission is doing is creating awareness on its activities and to let the Nigerian populace know that nobody is above the law. However, we are careful in doing so not to make it a media trial. Lastly, we have Ahimie Godwin saying, Oh, my country, Nigeria, what is happening to the inhabitants? Fraud, fraud, fraud everywhere. Where are we going with all the stolen money? We feel your pain. Lots of Nigerians feel the same way, and that is why we have agencies that checkmate the activities of fraudulent people and also bring corrupt individuals to book. Please join in our crusade. Thank you. And that's all we have for you on this week's edition of The Ego. Do join us same time next week for another interesting package. To leave a comment, please send your contributions to the eagle at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at official efcc or official efccng at gmail.com. You can also like our page on facebook.com forward slash official efcc or follow us on Twitter at official efcc. And to watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. Remember, Nigeria is the only country we can call ours, so it is up to you and I to work tirelessly in making it a better place. My name is Aisha Muhammad. Do have a beautiful evening and God bless Nigeria. <music>